So Solar One is a randomized phase three trial looking at the alpha specific uh, PI3 kinase inhibitor alpelisib combined with fulvestrant versus fulvestrant and placebo in patients who had metastatic breast cancer, hormone receptor positive, and whose tumors had progressed on prior non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors. The trial actually showed that there was a significant improvement in progression-free survival, almost a doubling, in patients whose tumors had mutations in PI3 kinase. It also showed, importantly, that PI3 kinase mutations could be detected in blood using cell-free DNA technology, and that it was almost as good as tumor. A small percentage of tumors were negative in the blood, and were positive in the tumor, mainly because there wasn't enough cell-free DNA in the blood. But it actually has now been approved uh, as a mechanism of testing for PI3 kinase mutations in order to assess eligibility uh, for use of alpelisib. So it's actually the first blood testing that's been approved in breast cancer as a way to determine treatment. So that, that was actually an exciting outcome from the Solar One trial. One of the big issues with this, obviously we're waiting for survival data in this trial population, uh, but one of the big issues, of course, when you're giving a targeted agent in combination with hormone therapy that's generally reasonably well tolerated is uh, what the added toxicity is. And PI3 kinase inhibitors, uh, the pan PI3 kinase inhibitors had largely failed due to toxicity. Uh, they just couldn't be delivered. A lot of, uh, you know, from the pan PI3 kinase toxicities, a whole variety of uh, pan PI3 kinase inhibitors, a whole variety of toxicities, including even uh, CNS toxicities with depression, suicidal ideation, that was colitis, all sorts of things. But if you look at the alpha-specific inhibitor, it has some of the class uh, toxicities, and that's uh, rash and hyperglycemia and diarrhea. Those are the three main toxicities that are seen. Uh, the rash can be prevented uh, largely by using antihistamines. Uh, so we recommend that patients receive antihistamines, simple antihistamines, uh, starting with the initial dosing of alpelisib. And uh, then, uh, you know, basically we don't see problems so much with rash. The other question is what the time course of these toxicities are. So we know how to prevent the rash largely, right, giving antihistamines, but it's important to know how long they need to take it for. So it turns out that most of the rash occurs in the first eight weeks or so. It's an early event. And then if you don't get it in that time period, you don't get it. So you don't have to keep taking antihistamines the whole time you're taking the drug. We also are very interested in the time course and ways to control hyperglycemia as well as diarrhea. So uh, we looked at this and have present, are presenting the data here at ESMO uh, that the time course for hyperglycemia is very similar to rash. So it's mostly in the first eight weeks. People either get hyperglycemia early or they don't get higher grade hyperglycemia. You might see some you know, changes in glucose late, but it all occurs early. This is very, very helpful for clinicians. So it turns out that you, know, you could check your glucose and hemoglobin A1C at start so you know who's at risk and who needs initial treatment. And then two weeks into your treatment, you gotta check that glucose again because some people will spike and that's where you start seeing the spike in glucose. But if you haven't seen hyperglycemia in the first couple of months, they're not gonna get problematic hyperglycemia. So we have recommended not doing anything prophylactically because we haven't seen that that changes the class effect, uh, but uh, treating patients with metformin uh, and then uh, the metformin dose can be increased as depending on tolerance. And then if patients still need additional treatment for hyperglycemia, we recommend in general consulting with an endocrinologist and using additional medications. And now there are new uh, oral uh, hypoglycemic agents that might be very effective in this area. Uh, there will be management uh, recommendations coming out in the literature in the next year or so that will help a lot, maybe in the next six months. The diarrhea is interesting. So um, like many other targeted agents, the diarrhea can occur any time. Uh, we've seen with some, for example, oral tyrosine kinase inhibitors that the diarrhea is like early and massive, right? That's not alpelisib. So you see a continuous low level of higher grade diarrhea. So people could get diarrhea even late in the course. So we recommend education about the diarrhea and then antipropulsives like loperamide that are given to patients to have and then to use as needed for the diarrhea. 
If a patient gets diarrhea late, dose reduction, holding the dose for recovery, works incredibly well, and it's rarely a reason for needing to stop drug. So those, that's really, I, I think, a big improvement in our understanding of how to manage uh, alpelisib most effectively for our patients to maintain their quality of life and to get the maximum clinical benefit from the combination.